provoking the press. Deserby's Magic Box Explained. Today we're going to be diving into the tactics. We're going to look at a little bit of analysis. Deserby's ball playing Brighton, one of the best teams in the Premier League this season. Brighton set up in most Premier League games in an overall 4-2-3-1 shape. But that transitions to a number of different shapes in possession and out of possession. Today we're going to dive into what makes Brighton so good. How do they draw their opponents out and how do they play through and break those lines? For me, De Zerbi is one of the best tacticians in the Premier League and is redefining the build-up. Brighton, in a way, build with their back six players but progress the ball with such ease. They create chances galore and loads of faux counter-attacking situations where the likes of Pascal Gross joins the other front four players players as Brighton break. Today we're going to have a look at that and also going to look at their ball playing, the importance of slowing things down. So in terms of Brighton's build-up play, it very much is all about the bottom magic box, the two defensive midfielders and the two centre-backs. What Brighton try to do is provoke you, to try and draw you on to squeeze high up the pitch, which in itself creates space in between the lines for Brighton to play a simple progressive pass through those lines and get into the final third. We're talking a simple ball from Duncan to a McAllister or a Danny Welbeck or an Enciso. Whoever's playing the attack in midfield and strike and roll very much drops in possession and becomes ball playing options. To view Brighton in a tactical perspective, they basically play a four plus two versus a four in the centre of the pitch. What I'm talking there is the two forwards and the two centre backs at the base, and they've got the two sort of defensive midfielders getting on the diagonal to receive defeat. You know, if we break this box down in the centre of the pitch, it's basically a 6v4 for Brighton. This is why they progress the play so easily. It's very much the attacking midfielder and the striker dropping off to get on the ball. This creates such problems for the opposition. The other big thing with Brighton and their possession structure, a lot of diagonal passes as we mentioned previously. Again, the massive benefit of playing on the diagonal means that you're receiving, uh, you know, basically on the half turn, straight to, to play forward and to, you know, advance the play, uh, carrying or looking for a forward pass. That gives Brighton a massive advantage. Instead of receiving, you know, like we see many Premier League teams do with a back-to-goal type play uh, and then having to turn, you know, it's easier to press a, a player that's got his back-to-goal. That's a trigger for a number of Premier League sides. If Brighton do utilise that, they usually utilise a bounce pass into the feet, play it off, work it back out, work it in, and then play that ball on the half turn for a Caicedo or even a direct ball into Danny Welbeck. One of the big things that Deserby does when he gets into the final third is using a combination of, of dribbles, uh, you know, be it Matoma or Solly Marsh carrying inside from the wide area and looking to combine. They also utilise third man runs to create um, and lots of one-twos and passes. After Brighton have broken you down with their brilliant possession play, they create in the final third with inverted dribbles, with third man runs from deep and passing combinations to create a lot of opportunities. But they load the box really well, usually with three to four, even sometimes five players in the penalty area to overload the opposition's back line. Brighton are one of the best teams in the Premier League with possession. One of the things I want to look at now is that idea of provoking the press. It's basically drawing the opponent in to areas where you can then play through creating an overload. We've seen in recent years how popular pressing is becoming in the Premier League with Jurgen Klopp's introduction, with Pep Guardiola's pass lane pressing. Lots of teams will squeeze high. What Brighton are doing now is they want you to press. They want to draw you on and they want to push you through the gears in that moment. And a Deserby quote that really struck with me came uh, earlier on in the year. The possession always depends on the opponent's pressure. The tougher the pressure, the more vertical, further development. The less opposition pressure, the greater control of our match and possession of the ball will be. What he's basically talking about is, you know, at centre half, if the opponent is squeezing you super high and being super aggressive on the ball, then play more direct then play more vertical. Look for those balls into the feet of the forwards. Look for the overlaps and then this pace in behind of one of the wide players. Alternatively, if there's no pressure on the football, if teams are sitting off in a, in a deep 4-4-2 block, then it's about controlling the game and really utilising kind of the interplay and utilising moments where you can, you know, maybe drop it inside, draw them on a little bit and then hit them with some width. Brighton are fantastic at getting their fullbacks inside and high and the wingers on the outside. Then utilising again that dribbling or that one-two on the inside lane to again create perfect opportunities. This is why Brighton are so, so dominant. That base box and the two strikers or the attacking midfield and the striker dropping off is so effective. So let's take a look at it. 
So we're going to have a look at a few examples of this back magic box with Brighton's rotations of positions and how well they can play through. This, of course, is against Wolverhampton Wanderers in the 6-0 demolition, but some of the possession play was absolutely brilliant. So we're taking a little bit of a look at the overall uh, you know, part of the game right now. As I mentioned previously, teams do sit off on Brighton's two defensive midfielders. Wolves are doing this at the moment uh, with their two forwards players. Uh, Nunez is in that position right now, Mateus, and of course, Diogo Costa. They're trying to sit off to try and restrict the uh, you know the ability to stop them playing through Brighton's attacking structure, the two centre halves, two defensive midfielders, and the two wing backs high. What Brighton want to do in this position is provoke you, is to draw you on. They do that by a number of ways. They utilise width of the pitch to try and coax you in, and then of course they do things like carrying the ball slowly out of defence. They use the sole of their foot in number of moments. So we're going to see that right now. Brighton working the ball through Lewis Dunk out to Estepin. Little one two, then see so, then the ball comes back to Lewis Dunk. As we can see, Brighton have progressed the play from their very much their defensive third into the middle third of the pitch. Simple progression using the width. But as it comes back to Lewis Dunk, what I love about this from Brighton is he arguably stops. He basically starts walking, which kind of what he's trying to do is signal to the Wolverhampton Wanderer player to press him. He's trying to draw that press on. We can see at the moment that the Wolves block is pretty decent. It's not over aggressive. It, it's sitting off. We've got the midfield kind of four, the two forwards. They're in a good defensive sort of shape. But what Brighton want to do is they want to draw you onto them and then create him behind. So as the play goes forward, what I really like about this is kind of the slow and the patience of this side. You know, we've seen Brighton score fantastic goals from back to front, but the patience is something that I think is really beautiful with this side. So what Lewis Dunk here, he's trying to coax that press and he's playing very, very slow. As he does that, Nunes is kind of, uh, you know, he takes a moment to jump. He, you know, he's operating in that, kind of aggressive, uh, you know, pressing role in that midfield area. Tries to squeeze the play, which forces Dunk to go back to Jason Steele, who's coming to the side because he's a better ball player than Sanchez. Ball's rotated back, and now we're in a situation where they're back in the defensive third, which flips a switch for Wolves instead of them sitting off in that sort of 4 4 2 0 shape. They're being more aggressive in the final third. We can see Costa putting pressure on the ball. Ruben Neves has now jumped uh, onto the midfielder. And we've got another midfielder backing up the play and putting pressure on Pascal Gross. This is exactly what Brighton want you to do. They want you to press them. In those moments, as we saw before, Brighton play more vertically. We could see the play going through now as the space is opened up by Billy Gilmore pulling over. Uh, Ruben Neves opening up that channel into Undav's feet. This is classic Brighton. Draw the pressure on, play the vertical pass, break the lines. Of course, from this move, Undav links with Danny Welbeck, a one-touch layoff pass. Welbeck then moves the ball out wide. It then breaks to this situation on the other side of the pitch after uh, one cross goes in, gets received on the left-hand side. And CISO drives at him, cuts the ball back to Estepinian, and Brighton score another goal. But it all comes from this base level of drawing the ball back, drawing the press on, provoking it, and then playing that vertical pass that Deserby spoke about. We've got a load of examples of Brighton doing this against Wolves, and it's the same thing over again. Lewis Dunk in possession, slowly carrying out the back, trying to draw the pressure. Some kind of good pressure from uh, Diego Costa here, uses the arc really well to press. But you can see how aggressive Wolves are again in midfield. What does that mean for Brighton? It means they've drawn you on, they've provoked, they've provoked your press. They're going to play vert vertical. It's a fantastic move. Ball into the feet of Welbeck. One touch off to um, Joel Veltman, and then you clean through on the opposition's goal. This actually leads to an under have poor touch but the possession play is absolutely brilliant after drawing on the Wolves press and a final example of a little box deep in midfield this time a really closed box but again we can see a little bit of pressure from Wolves Brighton going vertical into the feet of Undav once again and we can see how many players it's taken out of the game we've got what six players on the field right now that are out the game after a little bit of possession play this is what we're talking about these faux counter-attacking situations you're basically playing possession football but it looks like a counter-attack because you've taken and so many of the opposition out of the game with fantastic, calm, patient possession play, use of a box, use of third man runs, use of the two forwards into feet. It's absolutely fantastic. And I think one of the beautiful things about De Zerbi's coaching is that there was changes against Wolves. You know, we saw three of the really important first team players being replaced by Nciso on the left wing for Matona. Undav came in for McAllister and Billy Gilmore came in for Caicedo. Well, I think De Zerbi deserves so much respect as a coach is he's changed three really important players and Brighton are still playing that same way. They're still operating with that box. They're still trying to draw you onto them. 
in terms of pressure, and then they're just playing through. But not only that, not only do they provoke the press super well, but they press themselves in fantastic manner. Brighton defend deep in a 4-4-2 shape. You know, making that second bank of four with the midfielders. The two forwards are very, very aggressive. And then they press in supreme fashion as well. They press very much in a 4-4-2 diamond with the two forwards pressurising the football. Then Pascal Gross is the usual player that's going to jump. The wingers kind of tuck in a little bit and it creates this beautiful 4-4-2 shape. Brighton scored a fantastic goal against Wolverhampton Wanderers and it shows the duality of their game. Not only are they the best possession team in the Premier League for me right now, but they are absolutely brilliant in pressing situations. We jump into uh, the game at 12 minutes against Wolverhampton Wanderers. This is a moment where Pascal Gross scores a fantastic counter-attack that comes from super aggressive play. We can see how aggressive they are. Sitting in their defensive third, as soon as there's a backward pass or a backward throw, Brighton move up super aggressive. Pascal Gross covers so much ground. His ability to do that is so perfect in this move. Lamina's dropping as a halfback to get on the ball in between the two centre-backs, but Pascal Gross is quickly to, sh to shut him down, which forces Lamina into a quick pass into the feet of one of the forwards. There's a really poor touch after the pressure from behind and from the front from Danny Welbeck, which leaves the ball with Billy Gilmore. As I mentioned before, Brighton's possession is fantastic, but also they are brilliant as a counter-attack inside. You can already see Enciso's orientation. He's in that sprinting position. He wants to join the break. Great turn by Billy Gilmore. Gilmore, thread the football through to Enciso, a great carry at the Wolves defence, Enciso was fantastic against Wolverhampton Wanderers, another wonder kid that, you know, Brighton have magicked up in their lab, uh, ball gets into the box, simple heads up football, slips in Pascal Gross, Gross finishes off a fantastic counter pressing move. Deserby said last week that Pascal Gross is one of the best ever players that he's ever worked with and I think his second goal of the game Kind of shows exactly why. Brilliant first touch to chip the ball up and then on the volley into the top right corner on his stronger right foot. Pascal Gross having the time of his life. What a footballer capable of playing inverted right back, central midfield, attacking midfield on both flanks. I kind of agree with De Zerbi, one of the best players in the Premier League this season. And let's conclude with combining both of those things together. The counter pressing, the pressing, the structure, but also the possession play from Brighton is absolutely superb. Brighton squeezing Wolves at nil-nil in their 4-4-2 diamond shape. We can clearly see Pascal Gross as the attacking midfielder. The two wingers and the two centre forwards putting pressure on the goalkeeper from the two defenders. As the pass is played into the feet of Ruben Neves, Gross squeezes, which consequently sees both uh, the left winger and CISO and Solly March tuck in. You know, you're creating that narrow diamond shape. Absolutely perfect pressing. The pressure's on, which forces Neves to a ball back to Saar. Saar goes long and Brighton recover possession. As we mentioned before, Brighton love this square at the back or the diamond or wherever the shape kind of looks. From this moment, what I want to highlight here is the use of the inverted fullbacks. Usually, uh, we see Joel Veltman invert it a lot. At times we see Pascal Gross actually in attacking midfield and Veltman building inside with Brighton building with a 3-2, not the 4-2 that we usually see. At this time though, Esther Pinyan understands the tactical situation. Wolves are squeezing nice and narrow. They're looking to put pressure on the ball. The space is out wide. So where do Brighton progress to play? They don't need to go through the middle. They haven't got enough bodies in that area. As the balls work to Lewis Dunk, uh, the pass is on to um, Gilmore. But again, you see the communication from Brighton, but also so you see Esther Pinyan dropping off into the space. Billy Gilmore signals to um, Lewis Dunk, not the play to go. They work it wide to Esther Pinyan. You've progressed the play already. He carries, taking five players out of the game, linking with Enciso. The balls work to the right-hand side of the pitch. The well bet back heel, the undav finish. It's a brilliant goal for Brighton. From pressing to forcing Saar into that long ball to then building up with the square at the back, utilising the width to progress the play with a carry, a brilliant team goal. So to conclude, you have just got to watch Brighton this season. Some of their positional play is absolutely brilliant. The use of the two forwards as options into feet, the way that they draw the press on and then just simply play through you with a lovely bit of combination play. The width created at the back. Also, you've got the width at the top of it as well. That kind of four plus two shape that we mentioned previously, basically overloading that central area is absolutely brilliant. Some statistics for you wonderful people to highlight how good 
Brighton are. They're fourth in the Premier League this season for progressive passes and third for progressive carries, highlighting their ability to progress the play. But since De Zerbi took over, Brighton are first in the Premier League for shots per game and shots on target per game. They're second for expected goals per game and fourth for goals per game. They've got six players in the Premier League with five or more goals. The best record of any side. De Zerbi is cooking something beautiful at Brighton. The evolution of football, we're seeing it right now at the MX. And I think Brighton could get better and better. Their ability as well to replace players is absolutely ridiculous. We saw the rotation against Wolverhampton Wanderers with Enciso, Undav and Gilmore coming in for their first teamers, Mitoma, McAllister and Caicedo. And they played the same beautiful football. It is so impressive what's happening on the South Coast. Make sure you watch them as much as you can till the end of the season. It is just beautiful football, provoking the press, drawing the opponents on, playing through the lines, creating faux counter-attacks is why Brighton, one of the teams to watch this season in the Premier League. Guys, check out SofaScore if you're new, of course, subscribe. This has been the Premier League Review Part 2. Smash that like button. We'll be back next week, Monday and Tuesday. See you soon.